Oh yeah. You ready for this? It's another new day. We're just being unloaded here, right where we had uh, ended off yesterday. Still getting unloaded. I want to give a shout out right off the bat to someone here. Uh, let's go on to my, I posted it on my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash official trucker Josh. And some guy made a video about me. It's, it's called, I hate you trucker Josh and your followers. I saw that, someone sent it to me. I was like, what is this? Who's this? And uh, <laughs> it turns out he's actually a really nice guy. <laughs> he hates me, but really nice guy. He was just joking. I'm pretty sure, I don't know. Uh, I wanna send you over to his channel though, and you can see it for yourself. I'm gonna link it down below this video right now. Uh, I wanna share it because it got a good laugh out of me, and it, it really got me going, because when I read the title, I was like, oh, come on, what's this? Another hate video. And it clicked that he got me, he got me. But you gotta go watch it, you gotta go watch it, see what he says, see what he says. He never said that he didn't hate me. But you gotta go watch it anyways. It's called, uh, this channel's called uh, The Asian My Show. The Asian My, Sh My Show. And it says The Asian My Hates You. <laughs> I haven't gone through his whole channel yet, okay? So I can't completely endorse every single video that he's made. But I, I, I want to share this one video with you anyways, just because I thought it was pretty clever, pretty funny. And you can go check out the rest of his content and see if you like it yourself. If you do, subscribe to him. Why not? He sent uh, uh, all of his followers over to our channel here. He's helping us get to 100,000 subscribers, and I really do appreciate that. He seems like a really good guy and puts a lot of effort into his videos, so I want to send you guys over there. The link is down below in the description in this video. So on the agenda for today, we're going to Chicago from here. We're in Hortonville, Wisconsin. Sort of like Tim Hortons, but just Hortonville, Wisconsin. Uh, we slept in New London, actually, which is just down the road from here. So there's there's London, England, there's London, Ontario, Canada, and there's New London, Wisconsin. There's a lot of Londons out there. It's a very popular place. It's everywhere. Yes, what's it like? No, we just, oh, you just want to come and dance around for me? Oh, that's nice. Okay. So from here we go to Chicago, which is about three and a half to four hours away. We gotta be there by three o'clock. It looks right now like we'll be there about 2.30. We don't have a lot of time to play with, but we're just gonna stop for one coffee and a bathroom break on the way down and we're gonna book it. I think he's taking off, he's taking off the last lift right now. Okay. So I learned that I have come in here backwards. So now we have to back out. <laughs> I was supposed to back up the hill into here. But it was my first time here, so they cut me some slack. <laughs> he said they had a sign somewhere, but it got knocked over in wintertime by the snow plow. Like a U-turn if possible again. Turn left at 170 meters. Oh, it's possible, Karen. Anything is possible. Anything. I got a book that says anything's possible. backwards down here. I wish I had a whole camera crew to film me do stuff so it make it so much easier. I could get so many better angles. I'm in such a rush all the time. It's just always go, 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 go. I do what I can, guys. I do what I can. Let's go to Chicago. Shall we? Are you guys excited? Diesel, are you excited? Chicago, man. Chicago. I never understand how these freeways can be at a standstill every single lane. One, two, three, four, five lanes across. It's a freeway. There's no stop signs, no stop lights, no intersections, no nothing to cause people to have to stop. All right, buddy, you're in my lane with your little utility trailer there. All right, thank you. There, there, there's nothing ahead of these people, nothing except open road. So how on earth is every single lane, I can understand maybe like the, the couple of right lanes because people are merging in and off of the highway. What about the left lane, the far left lane and this left lane beside me? 
Why is that one not moving? Who are the morons at the front, at the very front, plugging up all five lanes of traffic every day? You ever wondered that? Like, how does it happen? There's no reason to stop. There's nobody merging on and off from the left. It's just wide open highway. Yeah, people are, look at this, dead standstill. I wish I could go up in a helicopter and see what you guys see from up there when you're flying around to see who's at the front of this madness. Because it's somewhat different every day, but they do the same stuff. And what causes this traffic? It's just so inefficient. But that's big cities for you, right? It's everywhere you go. Every city's the same. In one kilometer, keep to the left on I-90 East, I-94 East. This guy's been in front of me spoiling the view for you guys this whole time. And he's one of those creepers. He's one of those Billy Big Riggers that uh, just creeps along in first gear. So like dozens and dozens of cars keep cutting in front of him because he leaves such a huge gap. So this lane doesn't move at all. Moves even less than the other lanes because he doesn't want to keep up with the vehicle in front of him. Oh, I hate cities. It just gets me so mad right away. Just... Everybody just doesn't work together to make traffic flow properly. I want to get around this guy, but I can't because it's just it's just non-stop traffic, non-stop, both sides. Downtown Chicago. Once again, reminded why I live in the middle of nowhere. You know, when a farmer down the road moves his cattle across the road, you know that's a pretty big traffic jam. We gotta stop and wait for them all to cross. Man, you go into town sometimes Sunday morning, around noon. Sunday rush hour, that's pretty intense sometimes, but wow, this gives new meaning to the word traffic. This is just like Toronto. Except here, people like, I've seen two people use their signals so far. And I've been paying attention. I've been trying to, I've been trying to spot them. But I haven't been able to spot anybody who uses signals. This guy's dragging his trailer into our lane again. But your, your trailer's a little wider than your truck. You gotta realize that, right? this isn't your first time pulling that thing through traffic you gotta keep her in the center bud your trailer's about as wide as the lane so you don't got much wiggle room ah, downtown downtown gets the blood pumping oh and on top of that i gotta go to the bathroom didn't have to when turn i came right into the city turn right in 90 meters where am i gonna turn right karen you're just trying to Stress me out even more. I'm going straight. I'm going to turn right, go up the ditch there, go up the ramp. Where am I going to take this truck? This weird building off to the right, though, the big, like, circular cylinder thing. Oh, yeah, I bought a new condo in the cylinder downtown. It's like a cylinder. Weird. This guy's dragging his trailer right close to our lane again. I wish I could just click a button and poof, be out of the city. Man, wouldn't that be great? I don't know how you, like so many people live in these big cities, obviously, because they're a big city. So many people live here in these kind of places. How do you do it? How do you do it? it takes a special kind of person, I think. There's just so many people everywhere. It's just like a concrete jungle. Just something everywhere. And there's no reason for this traffic. Absolutely no reason. It's a freeway. There's nothing up ahead slowing down traffic. It's just people. Just people being people. Oh, thank God we made it out of downtown. Oh. So now we're into old Chicago here. And I've got to go a little ways around the corner here yet find my shipper. It's pretty smoky in this warehouse. They run these big diesel forklifts in here. But that's okay. So here's the load. See they put the poly wrap down first and they wrap it up, staple it up there. 
four big stacks there. So I gotta tie these all down and then we have to tarp it. Should be fun. This guy is just in front of me here. He's getting ready. See, they have the tarp machines over there where you just roll out your tarps. And then you drive underneath there and then it places the tarps down on. on. All right, so we just got the tarps rolled out. Now we're gonna drive underneath them there. And they're gonna set them down on my trailer. Makes like a two hour job, a 20 minute job. Good, so we have some time yet. Crape under. Way better, eh? That's awesome. I wish they had these machines everywhere. All I gotta do is bungee her down and we're good to go. I'm sure you heard the heard the good e-log. I got like six and a half hours left on my day today, yeah. There she is, all wrapped up. I had to use quite a bit of rug underneath there to make sure it wouldn't cut up my tarps. Hopefully I used enough. I think we're ready to go. This looks like crinkled over here, what's going on? Okay, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All right, let's go get our paperwork and go. This guy's got a dog too in his passenger seat. <laughs> I have no idea why they wouldn't move their like, or relocate their business. I know it would probably cost a lot of money to move that. It's a massive business. I'll just go around you then. There you go. But it is right in the heart of this congested area of old Chicago, where trucks like mine shouldn't be. It's nuts though. What makes me feel better though is I'm eating a donut from Quick Trip. Have you ever gotten their, like, their glazed donuts at like, the Quick Trip Travel Store in like Wisconsin? Oh, they rival Krispy Kreme. It's so good. Yeah, look at all these big trucks coming down here though. These are streets that were built when they used horse and buggy. When they were first building Chicago. They're, they're still like those long straight streets. Everything's in like blocks. I kind of like that way of building better than what they do nowadays with all the curved roads and they want to make it look all fancy. And nowadays everybody's got cars, right? Whereas when they built these streets, everybody had horse and buggy or they walked. Or they had, uh, uh, what do you call those, trolleys. Winnipeg had trolleys, trains. They'd roll down the middle of the street like this. And that's how, that was public transport. Winnipeg was one of the first cities to do that. Very similar to the, what San Francisco did. I think San Francisco still uses them, right? Sort of like a nostalgic type thing. Like they don't really need them, I don't think, but they use them. What do I know? I haven't been to San Francisco and I don't plan on going there anytime soon, so. Well, if you, uh, if you wanna go in front of me, I'll leave you a space there. There you go. You're very welcome. That spot wasn't for you, but uh, okay. Only one. It worked. It worked. It's all right. You just sort of gotta let things go when you drive in a city like this. Like, it, If you got problems with road rage, don't come to Chicago. Yes, this place is nuts. Have I told you that yet? I think I have, right? This place is nuts. 
I mean, people like, live in these congested old areas. And that's probably all they know, so this is probably normal to them. To me, this is like there's so many people. Such a neat neighborhood, though. Like back in the day when this neighborhood was first built, I bet you this was like the place to be. Oh, someone got a parking ticket. <laughs> When I was driving the other way, I noticed that there was a lot of cars with boots, those little tire locks on them. I wonder how you get those off. I guess you gotta call the parking authority and then pay your ticket and wait for them to take it off. Like, that's kind of inconvenient. But I guess otherwise people won't pay, right? <laughs> well, we got some action over here on the right. Nobody's standing around with their with their guns out. Oh, wait, someone's getting searched. Oh, I think that one guy had a vest on that said ice. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody got busted. But at least they have a McDonald's, right? At least they have a McDonald's. That makes everything okay. So we gotta we gotta go back through downtown. It's my best my best bet to get out of Chicago. I don't know this city that well. I don't want to end up in a neighborhood I shouldn't be in. I'm already kind of feeling like there's a bit of a sketchy neighborhood after the sun goes down. I don't know. But I don't know, right? So it might not be. But I don't want to risk it. So I'm just following the easiest way out. We're gonna go back to the 94 and just follow that out of the city. I don't want to end up at a low bridge either. This city has tons. It's known for low bridges. Like I said, it was built long before we had these big trucks. I don't want to get stuck at a low bridge. So I think we're in the right lane here. I want to turn right. I want to go to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I'm going to follow Interstate 94 all the way up to North Dakota. And then take Interstate 29 back up home. Where it turns into Highway 75 at the border. Did they build some new skyscrapers here in downtown Chicago? It looks fuller than usual. Just massive. In three kilometers, keep to the left on I-90 West, I-94 West. Yeah, you got it. I'm keeping left. Yeah, so far, it looks like traffic's not as bad this time yet, but it's it's like quarter to seven, 6.44 p.m. So you know we're gonna hit it here soon. Rush hour can't be over yet. Is rush hour ever over in Chicago? <laughs> do any of you live here? Of course some of you do. If I don't have any followers in Chicago, I must be doing something wrong, because there's a whole bunch of you here. There's gotta be at least one of you from Chicago. And I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a nice city. I'm sorry you're stuck with your Blackhawks, though. I mean, man, sorry to hear that you have to deal with those guys. <laughs> Here's downtown. Look at that! Look at that! Wow! Oh, and here's all the brake lights. There they are. Oh, you almost disappointed me. Hey, buddy, 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 careful, careful. I got a heavy load behind me. Easy. Can't stop much faster than that without completely destroying my truck and my brakes. So 
let's get through uh, downtown and let's get out of Chicago without hitting anything. And hopefully without anyone hitting me. I got my dash camera running. So if anybody tries anything sneaky up here, I got you on camera. Talking to you. Talking to you right there on the right. I saw that. I saw you were going to cut me off. I saw that. Not today. What kind of car is this? Kia. That is an ugly go-kart. Personal opinion. I mean, I'm sorry if you own one of them, but... See, he's still gonna cut in here. There he is. There you go. There you go. I knew you wanted to come in here. Now, nobody do anything dumb. I know it's a lot to ask. Nobody do anything. I don't want to hit anybody. Okay, we're all trying to get somewhere. We all want to go home to our families or to our dogs or our cats or your parrot or whatever you go home to. We all want to go home. I'm going to take her nice and easy through here because i got a heavy load behind me. So hopefully everybody respects that fact at least a little bit. Who am I kidding? 90% of the people on here have no idea. Meters, keep to the left on I-90 West, I-94 West. I was gonna say 90% of the people here have no idea how physics and gravity work in regards to a, a loaded semi on the highway. No idea. Well, that's okay. So I just gotta drive defensively and expect them to do something that could get them killed. And it's my job to make sure they don't get themselves killed. And I got my cameras running, like I said, so if they do do something, it gets me off the hook. Well, it's raining a little bit here in Mauston, Wisconsin. But that's okay. We're gonna find ourselves a parking spot here at the Quick Trip Exit 69. 94 and we'll call it a day it's been a long day I have 40 minutes left till my 14 hour day is up so it's been, uh, by the time I get finished here it'll be a 13 and a half hour day how many hours did you work today did you do more than me oh boy it looks pretty full here oh no I hope there's parking here somewhere I didn't think it would be full. I think I filmed quite a bit today. I think today's vlog will turn out to be pretty long. I'll probably have to cut out a bunch in between there. I filmed quite a bit when we were in Chicago. But here we are in Mauston, Wisconsin. Another day, another nickel. We have a new load behind us. This load's going up to Winnipeg, the capital of my home province. So I'm not sure if I'm going home after this yet i will still have hours available if they want to send me out to either back down to minnesota and back or calgary and back uh but most likely what will happen is i'll probably end up just running home get a quick reset reset my log book so that i get another 70 hours and then because i'll be home filming this on a tuesday is it tuesday today yes tuesday so tomorrow will be wednesday we'll be delivering this thursday I'll probably deliver this Thursday, go home Thursday evening, stay home for Friday, and then leave Saturday or Sunday on a new trip. And then I'll have a fresh log book and we'll see what they have for us then. Gotta keep these wheels turning. Uh, they've been turning very well. Everything on the truck has been working immaculately. You knew it was coming, knock on wood. Uh, if I could get another three months like this, we'll be good. And pretty much caught up I think from the the other weekend if I can get six months like this it'll be even better we'll be ahead and if I can get another couple of years like this woo! I'll be a happy trucker but uh, you know like I was saying that was a bit of a speed bump that we had a couple weekends ago uh, it was about a ten thousand dollar month but I am prepared that there are bigger speed bumps ahead Let's just hope that they are far, far, far in the distance, right? Because eventually this engine's gonna need an overhaul. 
I'll get an in-frame in -frame rebuild that could be up to $35,000. Uh, eventually things are gonna start breaking on it, but it's still cheaper than buying a new one because you guys are making the truck so expensive. All these fancy gizmos and everything, that's a rant for a different vlog. Let's not even get into that. We don't got time for a rant today yet. But anyways, thanks for watching today. Click one of these links around my face here. It'll take you to yesterday's video and another video that my channel thinks you might like. Click on my face there, the little circle. It'll take you to the page where you can subscribe to my channel and you can join us. It sure would be a pleasure to have you here with us every day. And it's free. So go for it. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. We'll see you right here tomorrow.